And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is another fantabulous Wednesday night with the PM Show here on FreedomizerRadio.com. We are having a full house tonight. How lucky are you? I take one week off. You get John and Danica, which, as I understand, was an awesome, awesome team. And then you come back to four people, the four people who run the show. I am so excited. So I am your host, Mandy Parsons. I have on the line with me Danica the Great and Ken the Liberty Phoenix. Hello to you both. Hello. Mushy, mushy. So glad that the phone lines decided to work appropriately tonight because um, tonight certainly has gotten off to an interesting start. I'd like to welcome our new friend who will be broadcasting tomorrow. So if you're listening, welcome, friend. We're glad that you're a part of the Freedomizer family. And I'm going to bring in Mr. John Moreland himself. You guys hold him just a second. Oh hey, my. John Moreland. as hell. John Moreland. Is great. Is that you, John Moreland? <clears throat> I'm back. John Moreland, I have Ken the Liberty Phoenix, and Danica the Great on the line with us. It is a full house tonight. I know. Well, you know, Danica and I had a really good time last week, so. Yeah, it was really, really fun. I actually got to talk to somebody that uh, we had some very good economic discussions, some good Bitcoin discussions. It was really awesome. I'm very excited to hear that. And it, it turns out the new friend who was testing his show, and it does sound like he likes rock music, that's for sure, It's called the Patriot Power Hour with Lucifer ben- Bernanke. So 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, tomorrow night. So please please take a listen and, and show him some Freedomizer family love. Um, you know, I really like his name, but I think it would be better if it was Ben Evil Bub. <laughs> Beelzebub Bernanke. It's got a good ring. I think I'll name my firstborn that. <laughs> um, I do want to remind everybody that if you're tuning in, welcome. If you tune in or you just want to listen to the show again, we will be broadcasting again, syndicated, on the Voluntary Virtues Network on YouTube tomorrow night from 4 to 6 Eastern. Uh, please feel free to listen and tune in. We always, always love our fans. If you want to talk with us tonight, feel free to call in. The guest call-in number is 347-324-3704. And as always, you can join us in the chat room at freedomizerradio.com. Come create a name, come join us, and come chat. We're lonely people who have nothing better to do on a Wednesday than to chat in the chat room to you. And if you're not... To the world. And if you're not there, then we talk to ourselves. So (laughs) everybody needs to... You know know what it really is, Mandy? We're all sinners. Because when I was growing up... We're supposed to, you're supposed to be at church right now. Oh, this is so true. But instead, we're telling people Went about tonight. the power of Christ <laughs> compels you, slash throw water, slash throw water, slash throw water. And Danica is apparently a priest. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a terrible, terrible priest. But sure, yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, she's, she's a priest. Well, you know, I always said if I became religious, I'd become a Catholic. Because, like, you can do whatever you want. And then you just get into the booth with the, the, the guy behind the curtain and say, Listen, man, you know, I had sex with three prostitutes, and I did this, and I killed four people. And he's like, you know, you're forgiven. What a great religion. Yeah, but the only problem is before you, ha- before you get forgiven, you, ha- you kind of have to do him a little favor for you before he does that. Did you just say woodly woo? <laughs> hey, I okay. just want to talk I wasn't aware of these favors. I- I'm just for, the, like, the couple of the Hail Marys, and then everything's forgiven, and I like that. Hey, I, I'm just saying, I would have no problem giving a Hummer if it absolved me of all my crimes. I'm just saying. I, you know I, what? I wouldn't put it past. I wouldn't put it past any of you to start this show out talking about blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we do have competition. Hey. You know, this used to be this used to be the vagina channel, and now we have the testosterone. You know, trying to make a comeback. So we got. You know, we we have a work cut out for us. Yeah, but Danica, we have the magical power of the hang up button on both. <laughs> So if we want it to be the vagina power uh, two hours again, we can make that happen. Oh, let's just string them along, Uh, and then we'll just hang up them at the very last moment. And make them finish uh, by themselves, yes. Isn't that how it always is? Bazing, bazing. Uh, (laughs) You you women, you know, it's funny. Women, I think, talk a good game because they've grown up in this modern society, and they think that, oh, it's fun, we can talk like this. But when it really comes down to us, they need us, man. I mean, if they want to bear children, if they want to have a, a companionship, they're going to need us guys. They want their uh, lawn mode or their oil right. change. Wait a minute. You, wait you a want minute. to have kids, you've got to have a vagina to spring. Hey. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He might be right. 
he might be right. If we want children, we do have to have their help. But if we want companionship, we'll get a dog. Ooh. Hey, you know what? At, with the, at this point in my life, with the experience that I had in relationships, I'm fine with that. I would rather a woman have a dog. Let the dog be their companion. They don't. Well, they don't. Yeah, dude, they don't talk about. Let me step in to do my duty, and I'll be gone, dude. All I need is a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. A little fifteen minute cushion pushing, and we're out. Wow. See, see wow. that? And see, wow. this is what women have turned. Hey, I'm gonna say this, and I mean this with all seriousness. This is what women have turned the, the world into. Men don't want long term relationships because they got to deal with a woman yeah, being a pain in the ass. So they would rather just have fling. Women have created this scenario. I'm just saying. I think you just dated John. I will no. I will say this. I will say this. Uh, Monday uh, night. Monday night we were doing our podcast, and we would be Ken the Liberty Phoenix um, and two of our other friends, and we do a, a Monday night podcast. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to them talk, and Ken is like, arr, 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 arr. and and the other guy, he's like, yeah. Arr, 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 arr. I mean, God, it was like they were both on their menstrual cycle. Okay, so I'm sitting there, and I'm just sitting there going, wow. And he goes, Tyranny Phoenix is making an appearance. And I'm like, wow. Wow. So it wasn't even me. I'm just listening going, what do I do with this? And these two guys are like, ah, 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 ah. So, yeah. Man, it's because like, oh, you I women like make us crazy. I'm for my asshole. Yeah, see, see, so they do have them, and, uh, yeah, so cheers. <laughs> it's It's called You Women Make Us Nuts. Um, Just okay. Sure. Okay. All right. We'll go. We'll go with that. Why not? I don't have an argument because it's not worth arguing. I'm glad yeah. that we can have that much control over you, men. You're welcome. <laughs> you make us crazy. That is why I love Danica the Great. Guys, I'm just saying, dude, nobody cooks as well as Danica. We're, <laughs> we're not turning this into uh-huh. a two-hour battle of the sexes. I do want to get into some serious chat today, but first, how's everybody's week going so far? Oh, don't all speak at once. I think we're all. Uh, yeah, I was like, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll tell you. Last week, I'll tell you. Um, I didn't get to listen to the show. I do want to thank John for filling in at the last minute, and Danica for being his loyal sidekick. I had parent-teacher conferences. Sidekick, sidekick. I carried that. Hey, show. hey, Robin. Hey, calm down <laughs> over there, bad boy. Just call. Just call him Batgirl. It's okay. Uh, or Batgirl. Uh, sorry. Batgirl. Last week, I was having parent-teacher conferences. Hey, Batgirl was That was quite an interesting say, experience. So. That's quite an interesting experience. It really was. Um, my first parent-teacher conferences. And it's kind of hard to hold them when most of your parents don't speak English, but their kids did a fantastic job of translating for them, and it went really, really well. So here I am okay. this week, new week. So, yeah. So so it went really well, and the kids had some really positive things to say about you, right? Well, the the parents who could speak English told me directly that they are really glad that their children are in my class and that they can tell I'm passionate about what I do and that they're very grateful for me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so it was really nice. And I got into a conversation with one parent about the truth of Abraham Lincoln, and he was like, man, am I glad you're my girl's teacher because I was wondering when a teacher was going to teach the real stuff. That's fantastic. Uh, well, you, That's great. You oh, are crap. in a southern city, sort of, you would hope. This guy is from New York. Do, do we still... Well, he does have oh, a point. Wow. You are from That's even better. I mean, it is a fact. You are What's rather that? biased. No, this guy was from New York. They just moved to New, uh, from what, New York what? last year. Okay, okay, wait. I want to go back to what Ken said about biasness. What, what was that now? Um, I was saying that, in Mandy's opinion, with Mr. Lincoln being such a, a, an evil totalitarian tyrant, I mean, she is from the South, so she's a little biased. Wow. Um, Just, I don't know. Wow. I, I wouldn't say the truth is biased, but all right, we'll go with that. Um, well, the guy he that just, I was talking to, he, though, said that he is he's from New York City. That's awesome, from Brooklyn, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so he's well, from you Brooklyn. Well, uh, you know, Rothbard was a was a uh, he didn't like Lincoln, and he was a New York Jew, and he couldn't stand Lincoln. So, um, what else was it the other day? Oh, today, no, yesterday, I was teaching the children about the Jim Crow laws and um, the Civil Rights Movement. I was touching upon it a little bit, and 
I had to I had to preface something a certain way. I told the kids that back back then, voting was a very powerful tool, and I had to specifically keep saying back then, back then, back then, back then, not so much today. Back then, back then. So I was trying to get in the fact that back then it was very important to vote, but not so much today. And that's the safe way to say it without being blatant. Well, that really depends there you on. Go the level of government that you're trying to initiate the change upon, because I really do think that in your local communities, in your, in your town, you know, your, your home, your, your, your city councils, your, even in your state senatorial elections, it does make a difference if you do vote. Uh, when it comes to the big national elections, yeah, no way. The voting machines are rigged. It's a joke. But I really think that where you can make the biggest change locally actually still can be controlled by the popular vote. I think you're right. This and I, I wish I could agree with you there, but it, the it's, I mean, I was... I've seen local and state elections, and, and they're just as bad as the federal elections. The detail specifically that I was talking about in class was the creation of the Ku Klux Klan to discourage um, black people from running for federal office as well as voting. Hey, they like pretty little costumes just like the cops do. What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, if we have a shiny patch instead of a shiny badge. That get, they got that shiny, shiny badges on the jacket. Kurt, Davi Bar- Barker. Okay. Worms. And I'd love to give a plug out for his his amazing book, Authoritarian Sociopathy. You always plug um, that book. Link a uh, a download site if you guys want to head over to the chat room at freedomizerradio dot com. Um, you can take a look at the book and you can download it for free on as an audio book or as a PDF. He always plugs this book. Wow, pimping out the book, Dobby looks okay. so proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm, so I'm almost Amanda. done with my version of his audio book. I just need to re- re-record Chapter 10, and I've had to re-record Chapter 10 for about two months now. I've got John trying to get my attention. Yes, John, how can I help you this evening? Yes, I, I couldn't raise my hand because you can't sing what is the first story you want to talk about? Let's get down to some something real here. Well, I'll oh. tell you, I I rarely I rarely ever read a newspaper. I was in a convenience store this morning getting my coffee, and I ran across or actually walked past the newspaper shelf, and the first thing I saw was that uh, the Ebola virus has finally been diagnosed here in. United States in Texas apparently. So I'm, I came across this ABC affiliate uh, from I think this was from Texas, but no, it's not from Texas because it's WFAA. I don't know where that's from, but if anybody didn't know, I'm going to pull out some nerd radio history here. If you are west of the Mississippi River, all of your news stations and all of your radio stations are going to start with the call letter K, and if you live east of the Mississippi, all of your Stations are going to start with the call letter W, except for a station in Pittsburgh, which is one of the first radio stations. They do have a, a K. They start with a K. So that's a little broadcaster nerdism there. But so it's WFAA, which is this is somewhere east of the Mississippi. But what they're saying is that in Dallas, that the sister of the first Ebola patient diagnosed in the United States says her brother told relatives he had notified officials the first time he went to the hospital that he was visiting from Liberia. Okay, so he went to a Dallas emergency room on Friday. They sent him home with antibiotics. He told his sister hospital officials asked for his Social Security number, and he said he didn't have one because he was visiting from Liberia. So they asked him then, a nurse asked this, gentleman on his first visit whether he had been in an area affected by the Ebola outbreak that killed thousands in West Africa. So, I mean, you know, I think, first of all, it's kind of fishy because I drive through the city of Atlanta every day. And if you'll recall, two Americans were supposedly brought home from Africa, both with the Ebola virus, both injected with this mysterious cure that's not been approved by the FDA and nobody's heard another word about them. <laughs> they haven't been in the news at all. And don't you think living in the state of Georgia and living like just minutes away from Atlanta that we hear something about this? 
I think it's extremely creepy and strange. And now you're saying that they're discovering Ebola in Texas because this guy is visiting from Africa and he's sick. Oh, God. What is going on here? I mean, what do you guys think about this? My mind obviously always goes to the conspiracy. Um, You know, somebody's lying somewhere. Somebody profits from fear always. So it's always a possibility that, you know, there's a conspiracy out there to get people hyped up against the uh, against the Ebola outbreak. Be afraid. Be afraid. And, um, yeah, that's just where my mind goes to. I mean, I'm not really afraid of this. I just – I find it really bum-fuzzling, I guess, is the best word to use. I, I'm not afraid of the Ebola virus. It's – I don't know what to say, but they're also saying that um, Dallas Superintendent Mike Miles also rev- – uh, revealed that five children from four of the district's campuses were possibly exposed to the virus. And uh, Conrad High School, Tasby Middle School, Hotchkiss Elementary, and Dandy Rogers Elementary. So, you know, I'm not seeing the connection here. I don't know what's going on, but, I mean, it kind of makes you wonder when you know that the uh, Center for Disease Control has a patent on one strain of Ebola virus. But, you know, here's the one thing they also have to consider because people are obviously freaking out about this Ebola virus because not only has it been found in Georgia but now in Texas is that um, the the way to understand this is that um, if you've touched the vomit, blood, sweat, saliva, urine, or feces of someone who might have Ebola, that's the only way that you can get exposed. So it's not something that they cough on you and, bam, you instantly have a ball. It doesn't work like that. So, yes, I realize that this disease is scary, but think about it. Unless you've been in, like, really, really close contact with someone, you probably don't, and you probably aren't at risk and should just calm down. Yeah, and the, the scuttlebutt I hear around is that it's only contagious once the virus has gone live, after the incubation period is when it actually becomes contagious. I just think it's it's odd. I mean, call me a conspiracy theorist if you if you want. I mean, it doesn't bother me one bit, but there is something big at work here. I don't think this virus came out of nowhere. I was reading something the other day with that had specific um, patent numbers to it that said that the government even has a patent for the uh, AIDS virus um, cure that they never released. And they have a, a patent on a strain of Ebola. Why do they have patents for these things? Because they want uh, to claim glory for cures. Uh, there's John's there's no John's patent. I, I don't believe any of that crap. There are people on the Internet who are just dying to find a conspiracy and everything. And I'm not one of these guys that say there is no, there are no conspiracies. I think there are obviously – I think there are. Like Building 7, you know – it, I, I guess the only way to put it is that Building 7 bothers me because the official explanation is obviously BS. And so I'm not totally against conspiracy theories. Two people get together and conspire, there's a conspiracy. But, I mean, come on. I think sometimes we go a little too far. I mean, we end up in the, the, the tinfoil hat libertarian crowd where everything's a conspiracy. I mean, like everything. But not everything is a conspiracy. Well, it, and I don't, the I mean, I don't believe these patents mind. either. Having a critical mind kind of denotes that you do not rule out the possibility of a conspiracy. I mean, if, if we're going to look at no, at I don't rule it out, but then we can't rule out conspiracies uh, in general. Right, you can't well, rule them out in general. But I'm also logical enough to believe that not everything is a conspiracy. But there are people on the internet that would have you believe that everything's a conspiracy. Well, I don't believe that everything is a conspiracy. I certainly don't, but you telling me that they don't have patents, when I've seen the patent numbers and seen the information, you, you're not going to tell me People that they don't have a patent. People can make that up. Did, did People you see can that make that up. They, from somebody? Did, did you I can create a birth someone, certificate that, that made website, me the father of Obama. Go to the patent office? That came off of that came off of um, Google's information bases, and I'm not talking about a search. I'm talking about their dedicated education um, Base, the, the, the document well, base. Really if they have this them. patent, why are they selling the cure and making money off the cure? I have. I can't answer that. I'm not the government. I don't know what they have in store for us, and I, I think they do have things going on behind the scenes. I have no idea what they're plotting and planning, but it's obvious they're they are um, plotting against the American people.
two more years of trying to get patents now because I remember listening to an episode of Free Talk Live a, um, a few, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Murphy was on there and she was saying how they're trying to establish this patent to, oh, we can we can officially say that this is how you decaffeinate tea or coffee. And she's like, okay, well, it's a little known fact, you know, I don't necessarily want to get in trouble if this is indeed a patent, but, you know, it's a very well-known fact that this is how you um, decaffeinate tea. And she's explained how it's just a common fact of how you do it. And I was thinking, why would anyone be seeking a patent for this kind of thing? And for, it, any it listeners, for any listeners that aren't aware, Free Talk Live is a syndicated radio show on the LRN network. Um, which you can find at lrn.fm. Um, you know, the, the patent concept of you know, somebody, anybody can patent something. That doesn't mean that they actually have the plans for it. Um, but, Mandy, did you see these patent numbers from the you, – you said that you didn't see it from the actual patent office. Well, that, that necessitates further research to prove that it's actually there. Otherwise, it's, logical, it's, a, it's a logical fallacy that is just an, an appeal to authority. Um, no, no, I'm going to look this up and show you exactly what I was looking at because this isn't, this was from, oh, here's the, hold on. This is patents, human Ebola virus species and compositions and methods thereof. The U.S. patent number is U.S. 201-202-51502-A1. Okay, it's a, it's, that's the publication number. And it says publication type, application number, PCT number, publication date, filing date, priority date, also published as, and gives more numbers, the inventors, the original assignee, the export citation. So it's giving citations. It's it's legit if it gives citations. Well, but anybody can link to that stuff. I mean, if you click on a link, does it actually go to a website? That's what verifies it. Because people can just make up any type of website and make it appear blue when you put your cursor over it. Uh, hold on just a second. I don't know. What is this? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I don't know if the, the layman has enough skill. Look, 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 I've done, I have, oh, never mind. I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to say it. It's kind of rude. This is legit. It's legit. Okay. Okay. Well, I take your word for it, but I'm just saying, for everybody else out there that doesn't understand the concepts of critical thinking, you know, it requires due diligence. Well, it's got, let's see, um, cited patent, cited patent. I don't know. I guess I would have to do more investigation concerning how to look at patents if they're available from the, you can get them from the U.S. database. But, I mean, it's pretty, what the information they're giving is pretty self-explanatory and thorough. The question that I think we need to break down is who benefits from Ebola scaring people. Who could benefit from that? The government. Obviously the vaccine companies. Obviously the Doctors. makers of different uh, plastic products as far as plastic gloves and facial coverings and uh, different garb that you can put on to protect yourself from viral outbreaks. Anybody uh, who's trying to decrease the population. Very true, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I mean specifically with the the fear who who can who can who can profit off the fear who who can profit off of it actually existing well that's a very few select individuals I'm gonna post this in the Freedomizer chat room so people can take a look at this for themselves now our new friend Lucifer Bernanke said don't waste time getting that deep into the weeds with the patents we know that they have bioweapons and we'll use it for real or propaganda and that's that's exactly what I'm trying to say. I think he, he and I are on the same page on that thought. But I don't know I don't know what to say about this latest outbreak. I don't know what to say about the fact that they're not talking about the people who came home and that they inject were injected with the mysterious cure. Um they just haven't said a word about them and being in Atlanta, being right outside of Atlanta, driving through Atlanta every day and not hearing another word about these people is really unnerving to me for some reason. Well, anything is going to be put hush hush. I mean, the the American media has the attention span of a gnat, so they're not going to pay much attention to it as soon as we start bombing Syria, which just happened recently, without a declaration of war, might I add? Right. Well, you know, in, in general, don't worry. Whatever it is, if it's a crisis, 
the state will take advantage of that. The government will make sure that they extract every advantage they can from any crisis. So that is very. At the end of the you got to remember what uh, what the the mayor of the great city of Chicago said, Mr. Rahm Emanuel. You would never want to pass up the opportunity to use a crisis, man-made or legitimate. Because it gives you the opportunity to do things that you couldn't otherwise do without that state of fear. Now, I will I absolutely agree with you. There. I will say this: we're going we're gonna to switch gears a little bit. I think it was on our podcast, Unity Evolved, which is on Monday nights that we record, and then we broadcast it. What on SoundCloud? That is correct. And you can also find it on iTunes. Um, but we talked about. Waldo, Florida, and speed trap scams with the police force, did we not? We certainly did. Okay, yeah. And I had mentioned I had been to the city of Waldo, and in Waldo, like every mile or so, they would switch the speed, or maybe it was even half miles, I don't know. But it would go from 35 to 45 to 55, back down to 35, up to 45. Um, And we were talking about how in the state of Florida, it is illegal to have police quotas. And John posted this article about an hour ago. This is from the DailyMail.co.uk that the police force in the most corrupt city in America is disbanded after speed trap scam that made up half of the city's revenue was exposed. And the picture that posted when he posted this article is one of the said uh, billboards I was telling you guys about because the billboards, somebody purchased a few of these billboards and put in big letters, speed trap, Waldo, six miles ahead. So they're warning people of these speed traps. But um, the uh, the police chief had resigned, if, I wasn't, if I'm not uh, incorrect. Yes, former police chief Mike Zabo resigned after a ticket quota scandal came to light in August. And so now the entire police force has, has disbanded in Waldo, Florida. They disbanded the entire police force? And that's what it says. Uh, the, wow. Waldo, the Waldo City Council voted four to one on Tuesday to dissolve the police force after both the police chief and his replacement were suspended over allegations that included ticket quotas. And that's not just the police chief. That's his replacement, too. See what I mean? Small government can work if people are informed. I am an anarchist. I do not believe in minarchy because I believe the biggest tyranny grows from the smallest governments. But in the short term, it can work and it can be effective to hold the people who are in power accountable for their actions. You might want to be Thank careful you, saying that because um, our lovely Brian Hagen is a self-called a uh, minarchist. So I'd be very interested to see what kind of discussions that you two would get into. Now, wait a minute. I thought that Brian Hagen also dropped the minarchy and went to anarchy. I don't, I don't know if he did or not. I think he did great. If not, well, yeah, I think he did. I think he said he was just tired of it. He was fed up. Uh, I will say this. It says the decision to disband Waldo's police is partly due to the estimated cost of modernizing the department's facilities and computer systems, which investigations triggered by corruption allegations showed were outdated. So you're going to, you're going to get rid of the entire police force because you need to modernize the computers. Does that make sense? Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't even make sense. So, um, yeah, that is an interesting turn of events in Waldo, Florida. I'd be very interested to know if these speed limit signs are going to go away. Are the speed limit signs are going to go away? Yeah, we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> Bureaucracies do not lower themselves. They may fire everybody, but they're not going to take out the signs. You've got to pay somebody to do that. I mean, if you guys remember, there was the article or the story about the individuals that were putting up their own stop signs in dangerous, um, dangerous areas, and the city actually paid $1,000 a person to take them down when it only cost something like 600 bucks for them to put them up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, this whole thing is crazy, though. It's just, it all comes down to money. But I will say this. We're going to have to take a break in just a moment, but you have an article that you want to talk about when we come back. So why don't you tell us uh, what we're in store for after our commercial break? Well, it is an update to the story 
of the lesbian couple that wanted to get married and the bakery that refused to uh, to make their their cake. Oh yes. Oh. Awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, and we'll come back to you guys in just a minute. Oh, it might help if I was on the commercial page. Awesome. Okay, so now, now we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be back right after a few messages. This is Merton. After these messages. You're listening to this message. Warriors, you are the resistance. Warriors, you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. Read about it in the Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available now at newsstands everywhere. The Sovereign is a monthly 24-page tabloid newspaper featuring incendiary content about life during wartime in the age of Obama. Warriors, keep to date every month. Remember to read the Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available at newsstands everywhere. This alert is for all you boppers out there in the big city, all you street people with an ear for the action. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, warriors, you are the resistance. This is Mercy. Mine will be the last voice you will ever hear. Don't be alarmed. My name is Dr. Eric Norman. I have studied vitamin B12 deficiency for over 35 years. I have developed the urinary MMA test to detect tissue B12 deficiency early, allowing Treatment and prevention of permanent disability. B12 deficiency can cause anemia, but also neurologic problems such as spinal cord degeneration, paranoia, and dementia. B12 is found only in animal sources, so vegetarians become deficient. As people age, they may not produce enough stomach acid or intrinsic factor protein for absorption of B12 and become deficient. Up to 10% of seniors may have a normal serum B12 level, but a tissue B12 deficiency causing a three times greater risk for heart attack, stroke, or Alzheimer's. For more information, visit B12.com. This is Mercy. Vaccines are required for students, employees, immigrants, military members, and international travel. Do you know how to legally avoid them? This is vaccine rights attorney and Freedomizer radio host, Alan Phillips. My vaccine exemption ebook can help you avoid the mistakes that have cost others their exemption rights. Get the Authoritative Guide to Vaccine Legal Exemptions, an ebook available at freedomizerradio.com and vaccinerights.com. Let freedom ring throughout the land. And we're back. We hope you enjoyed those messages. They kind of have the same ones. We need to put in some more. and need to play probably some other shows, commercials. But it is me, Mandy Parsons. John Moreland is calling in from a secret remote location. And I have Ken the Liberty Phoenix. And from Danica, my bunker. Oh, great. And Danica the Great is on the air with us tonight, too. It is a full house. We're having a party. We're having a great time. And we're about to get into an article that was an update to an article apparently we covered a few weeks ago. Take it away, Mr. Phoenix. So this article comes from theblaze.com, Mr. Uh, Mr. Glenn Beck's website, by a uh, oh, he's a great American. By the name of <laughs> hey, at least he's trying. Maybe he's co- maybe he's going to pro controlled opposition. But I don't know, but he's trying. Country. He just loves his country. From the Oscar, is that Danica or is uh, that Amanda? That was me. That was Mandy. Okay. And it, it it's an update to a the story about sweet cakes that was a, a bakery in Oregon that refused to make a wedding cake for a gay couple. He pronounced it Oregon. He did pronounce it Oregon. Yes. Oh. Oregon, no. like origami. So if you're, yeah, if you're folding paper, Oregon. if you're Oregon, if you're folding paper, is it origami? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> hey, Danica, are you one of these pronunciation Oregon. snobs? No, I'm with her. It's Oregon. Now let please let Liberty Phoenix keep it's reading. Oregon. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Let him keep going. So officials in Oregano have ruled that sweet cakes by Melissa, a bakery that made national news after refusing to make a cake for a gay wedding last year, violated a lesbian couple's civil rights, which I don't even really believe. There's no such thing as civil rights. There's only human rights. Continuing on, owners Aaron and Melissa Klein, Christians who oppose same-sex unions, reacted to the Oregon Oregano 
Bureau of Labor and Industries ruling in an interview with KATU TV, telling the outlet that they stand by their convictions. We still stand by what we believe from the beginning, said Aaron Klein. I'm not sure what the future holds, but as far as where we're, we're at right now, it's almost as if the state is hostile towards Christian businesses. Um, the Bureau of Labor and Industries released a statement on the matter, noting that the lesbian couple in question, Rachel Cryer and Laurel Bowman, had filed an official complaint with the government under the Oregon Equality Act of 2007, a law that protects gays and lesbians using public venues. Under The only problem is that the, uh, the bakery is not a public venue. It's a private business, jackasses. Under Oregon law, under oregano law, or, or, Oregonians, I don't care. I'm saying it how I want. May not be denied. <laughs> Oregoni. <laughs> Oregonians may not be denied service based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Read the release. The law provides an exemption, and if you'd like to read the release, I have linked to this article in the freedomizerradio.com webpage in the chat room. So if you go there, you can check it out to continue. The law provides an exemption for religious organizations and schools, but does not allow private business owners to discriminate based on sexual orientation, just as they cannot legally deny service based on race, age, sex, disability, or religion, which I think is outrageous. How dare you force any business to do anything with their private property, you authoritarian, totalitarian dicks. To continue, the next step in the ongoing case will be for the Klein family and Cryer and Bowman to try and come to a settlement. If that is not achieved, then the Bureau may bring formal charges and move the issue to BOLI's Administrative Prosecution Unit, responsible for processing contested civil rights division cases pursuant to the Administrative Procedure Act, APA, and BOLI contested hearing case rules. Uh, in September... The Blaze, that's the site that we're reading from. Hey, good on you, Mr. Glenbeck. He just loves his country. (laughs) (laughs) The Blaze Blaze reported that following intense... Hey, hey, let me ask you a question real quick, Ken. Uh, Did they say anything in the story about, like, if they just bake them a cake, will this all go away? I mean, like, just bake these lesbians a cake and let's be done with it. Any, anything, any indication uh, there? That's not although I think that would be an amazing question to ask the two individuals. I'd love to get them on either the PM yeah. show for an interview or Unity Evolved. I think that would be an amazing That would be fun. Amazing. We should try that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they said... Like, hey, in a, hey I think we should have the lesbians on, too. I think that would be even more fun. Just just, just random lesbians on? They'd no, no, the lesbians that are fine on the suit. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. He I just wants them on because they're lesbians. <laughs> Are they lipstick lesbians? We we need to make it. I need to hold on. Let me Google a picture of these two, and then then John, I'll, I'll much, comment whether we should have them on. drinking tonight? That's what I want to know. Oh goodness! I actually haven't had anything so, to drink yeah. tonight, which is even more scary. Chicken yeah, you know, uh, I, I talked about is um, what the Mer- the Merlot that you had last week was it Merlot? Oh God! Why no, no, it's a Malbec or, ne- or Negro oh. Modelo. Ah. Oh no! Oh, I was drinking Negro Modelo last week. Gotcha. You cannot okay. confuse Merlot and Modelo. Merlot is wine. Modelo is Mexican beer. You've heard the words. It's not my fault. <laughs> I can understand what he said. <laughs> hey, I did not. I never slur my words. Unless I unless I have consumed too much. I am. I'm about four shots in and two beers. Gotta love it. Oh wait, you know what? Let's let <laughs> Let's let Liberty Phoenix finish his article. Absolutely. So September, the Blaze reported that following intense scrutiny and furor among gay rights ag- activists, advocates that inevitably impact, impacted businesses. Jesus Christ, now you all got me fucked up. The clients were forced to close Sweet Cakes by Melissa. They're now operating out of their home, which, in my opinion, is the proper course of action. If you don't support them, that's fine. Don't use violence against them. Just don't buy from them. Since the debate made headlines in early 2013, the family has reported being harassed by those opposed to their stance on the cake matter. They're already planning to harass me, Melissa told the Blaze. They're just continuously doing this. They just don't want me to be in business at all. Um, Yeah, sorry. That's their right. The harassment came in some very eerie forms, too. In September, Melissa said that someone broke into the sweet cakes truck, 
a oh vehicle that the family uses to advance its business. Now, that is not harassment. That is destruction of private property. That is a violation of private rights, and that she has every right to defend her property with every means necessary up to and including deadly force. But I digress. It was particularly nerve-wracking for Melissa and Aaron as their home is in a highly secluded area, one that's nowhere near their former shop. So somebody came up into our driveway, rummaged through our truck, and took our stuff out. The really strange thing is they didn't steal anything. They just made a mess. It was a little creepy. So that sounds like destruction of property because they had to break her property in order to get into the truck. Um, but just to kind of, you know, weird them out, it's kind of a waste of time. I mean, if, if these guys are trying to troll them, they're failing hard. While the family has been under fire, many continue to support, to support Sweet Cakes by Melissa. The business's Facebook page has more than 12,000 likes, and Melissa regularly updates the public about her business and the plight the family faces. She publicly thanked those who have been praying for the family following the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries ruling. She said in, in a statement, To all of you that have been praying for Aaron and I, I want to say thank you. I know that your prayers are being heard. I feel such a peace with all of this that is going on. Even though there are days that are hard and times of struggle, we still feel that the Lord is in, in this. It is his fight, and our situation is in his hands. Melissa asked the public to continue praying and promised to provide an update as soon as more information is available about possible signs of coming. That's the case by Melissa to say. Oh, no, is that nice. So that's the article, guys. What do you think? I mean, did uh, should they have gone out of business? Is that the proper way to to go about it, or is using the state's monopoly on force and violence the way to go? Absolutely not. I I mean that's I'm all for humans being equal, whether or not they're gay, lesbian, transgender, heterosexual. I'm all for equality across the board, but they're turning the same things against them. Just like say. Like what's a, what's a good example? Like say for religion, for example. Oh, we can't you know service you because um, you know you're a Christian and we're a Muslim. No, it's just like you know you should not be forcing the faith to get your way. If you don't, if they if they own their business, if they're in it for themselves and they choose not to serve faith because it goes against their religion, that's freedom of speech and they should be free to do that. Yes, you can be upset with them and recommend people don't shop there and just not give them your business, but they're not hurting you. I'm sure there's equally just as good caterers, bakers out there that can do just as well of a job as they can. And you know what? People, you know, people that don't support gay rights can go to said Sweet Cakes Bakery and give them their business because they're happy about it. And gays, lesbians, and those that do support gay marriages can choose to not give the business there and go elsewhere. Why would you need the state to to come in like that? That's just, it's, it's disgusting. Well, I will, because, I will okay. say this really quickly, that whoever is reading this article who doesn't mind homosexuality or their unions, whether they be recognized officially as marriages or whatever they're recognized at, as who can actually bake, guys, start a bakery. You'd make a fortune. <laughs> and I'm dead serious. That's like a totally new avenue for these people. That They would have people all over the nation coming to them. Well, you know, I, I have to say, I'm against equality, to be totally honest, because I don't believe equality exists in nature. Now, one thing I think maybe we all could agree on is that, you know, there should be equality under the law, and that's the way the, the, the term mm. was originally meant. Uh, but yeah, now yeah. it's gotten distorted oh to mean something else. None of us are equal in any way. And I'm against this whole idea that we're all equal. We're not all equal at all. I mean, I don't even understand how the concept can be so widely accepted that we're all equal when it's obvious from just observation we're not we're not equal. But if we're going to have equality under law, I'm fine with that. Beyond that, if somebody wants to reject someone because they don't like the way they look, they don't wish to associate with them, well, that's the price you pay if you want to live in a free society. Hey, speaking of equality, listen to this, changing gears. German universities scrap tuition fees. All tuition fees. 
Listen to this. All German universities will be free of charge when term starts next week after fees were abandoned in Lower Saxony, the last of seven states to charge. Now, what does this have to do with equality? Tuition fees are socially unjust, said Dorothy Stoppelfeld, senator for science in Hamburg, which scrapped charges in 2012. They particularly discourage young people who do not have a traditional academic family background from taking up studies. It's a core task of politics to ensure that young women and men can study with a high-quality standard free of charge in Germany. Good Lord, they have absolutely no idea about economics, okay? If you don't charge for the band classes, then nobody's going to make any money, and the teachers aren't going to have anything to be paid with. I don't want to work for free. Have you lost your dang mind? That's just tuition, though. Yeah. Who's to say they're not... They're yeah, but for them, it's not an economic yeah. issue. But for them, it's not economics, and I agree with you, but for them, it's a moral issue. They think that what they're doing is morally superior by making everyone equal, and everyone gets equal, quote-unquote, access, which basically means someone else pays for their stuff. And then the other, and on the other thing. hand, they're pointing a gun at those teachers saying, hey, you have to work. No, they're not. You guys are reading way too much of this. First of all, it never said anything, never said anything about socialized education and how the, the country is paying for it. It also never said that there weren't other ways to, to fund this. That's the thing. I'm just listen to you both. Plus, plus, how many times here in the U.S., have we said that the university system is one of the most corrupt systems banking in major bankroll every single year from poor students? And here these students are getting to go to school for free and you're bitching about it. So really Because it's in because the reason that I, I rage against tuition fees in the United States is because all the, the major uh, colleges are in bed with the government. They get they get money from the government. But we this is a totally different country. In our country, yes. I can see that, but we didn't even get to that. Now, the article, it cut off, and I have to subscribe to get the rest of it, so I'm going to find it on another website. But my point is that these kids, they're sitting here specifically saying that they're, we don't want to discourage kids from not going to school just because they came from a non-traditional educational background. I think so far, so far the article sounds great. Um, this is back in the 50s. Americans would go to university. They would pay by working their way through, and they'd come out debt-free. We know that the next bubble in the United States is probably going to be student debt. It's, it's headed that way, and if it's not already. But the fact of the matter is that if this is working in Germany and all the details are good, why not celebrate that finally a country has been able to do that? Well, I don't know that that's 100% accurate, Mandy. And as far as the scuttlebutt that I've heard um, – Tuitions in the United States didn't even exist um, until like somewhere in the 60s or 70s, something to that effect. If you guys can correct me, I'd appreciate it. Say that again. As far as I've come to understand, tuition in the United States, as far as for colleges, uh, it used to be free. Well, all I, all I can tell you. I, I didn't hear that either, but all I can tell you is that, and I, you know, I could even ask my grandparents about that. They both went to the Ohio State University back in, I think, the 40s and 50s. So, yeah, that's right, about the 40s they went, and they got their degree. So I could probably ask them, but I got my information concerning working their way through and coming out debt-free from Ron Paul. Um, I actually heard that from one of his, his books. I think it was Liberty Defined, in fact. And Liberty Defined covers 50 topics of interest from a Liberty standpoint. Uh, I own the book, and, and I reported on that once upon a time on a show I used to have on RonPaulRadio.com. So I know that much comes from him. Um, let's see. I have this article Ken, what, on what another. What you may be talking about is uh, – one thing I just wanted to say, say to Ken is he, he might be talking about um, some of the colleges and universities – would have major donors, and a lot of kids would end up going for free because the alumni or whatever would would contribute a certain amount of money, and a lot of students could go without paying. But that's the only thing I know. I don't think it was ever, like, officially government-free or something like that. Well, I mean, as far as tuition was I do know. Maybe what what you're getting confused is that the the minimum – with the minimum wage that they made or whatever wages that they made over summer, 
paid for the following semester or following year's worth of tuition. Now that gap is so widely breached that a full, like, full-time like full summer's work is not even going to pay for the average college's half semester. So it probably was is that they just they worked a lot and were able to pay their tuition, so therefore they left school now, with very that's little to know true. that. So I think, no, I think that's, that's, that's the absolutely true. My ex-father-in-law, he, he drove a bus during the summer, and he could pay for his whole year of college. And this was in the early 60s. Yeah, my dad um, worked on houses during the summer, and he was able to pay the following year um, for tuition. He was already married at that point and having kids, so that that was how he yep. paid for college. I'm trying to find more about this article. There's nothing saying how uh, if these how the how the professors will get paid and so forth. I'm trying to find more. Okay, well, I would. I I think I would love to go to Germany for a semester just to brush up on some, I don't know, philosophy classes. It sounds like a, a great thing. Is this only for um, citizens, German citizens, or can anybody go? That's another question that remains unanswered at the moment while I try to find an article. However, I will do my best to find the answers you seek. So, my, my guess is it'd be citizens only, kind of like the healthcare system there. They've got a, a yeah. I wonder what it would be for like a certain amount. I wonder what it'd be for like international students. That's very interesting. Let's see here. Hey, I'm almost study. to that point. Just take all the free stuff you can. <laughs> this says um, talking about a master's in Germany, which I have a master's degree. Let's see. It says. German study expenses. German federal states set their own education fees. Presently, only two federal states charge tuition fees about 500 per semester, which were Bavaria and Lower Saxony. Lower Saxony was the one who just stopped taking tuition. All other federal states do not charge tuition, though a semester fee of 150 to 250 is usually required. Industries is that spons- denominated in euros? Yeah, this is in euros, but listen to this. Industries sponsor bachelor and master students. That's how they're going to school. Students attending industry-relevant master programs may receive around 600 to 800 per month from companies for a period of six months. This says the German Academic Exchange Service, also known as the Deutsche Akademischer Austauschdienst, provides scholarships to international students and researchers coming to Germany. The Federal Ministry of Education and Research also hosts a site dedicated to scholarships in Germany. This is how the students are getting through school. They're sponsored and they get scholarships. Huh. Sponsored. And this is talking about visas. So this is even more of an encouragement for people overseas to come into their universities. Well, I guess I'm, I'm trans- no, I finished college, finished college, but that would be a uh, wow, interesting. Sounds like a dream come true, actually. Yeah, but hey, when you get other people's money, money, it always is a dream come true. <laughs> it's not the truth. It says you can get health insurance usually for about 50 euros per month. Some universities may offer service packages, including accommodation, meal vouchers, and health insurance policy. So That's what is, I'm talking is, about. So this is primarily speaking to people they'd like to come to their country to study for a master's degree. I think that this is this is amazing. This Hopefully is wonderful. Well, now, I, Mandy, like who it. pays for this? No, maybe my barometer is off. May, but I mean, getting sponsored by a company and getting scholarships sounds socialistic. Um. Uh, well, who's paying for this stuff? The the companies are that that hire these individuals post graduation, I would assume. Yeah, some of them. And listen, I mean, Germany is home to some of the most well known um, companies. You know, BMW, Volkswagen, uh, Deutsche Telekom, Adidas, Bayer, Deutsche Bank. Now, the Deutsche Bank sets off alarms, but it's a banking company. But I mean, if okay, somebody but what owns, I understand. Are, are tax dollars being paid for this, or is this completely privately funded, supposedly? 
this says it says nothing about taxes. It says nothing about taxes. Huh. Now, well, then I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, all it's talking about are these companies who are sponsoring these people. And, of course, you know, yeah, they have That's a better right. chance of getting jobs with some major, major corporations after after the their t- studies are up. But also they can, like I said, they get scholarships. And scholarships or, or donations or think people set up scholarships in memory of other people or, or in memory of an idea or in lieu of an idea. So, I mean, so far it sounds good. I could be totally off base here, but this comes from a website specifically set up for information about how to gain a master's degree in Germany. Huh. Well, you know, I'm I, wondering I, wondering I think we had a free society that. <laughs> that there would be a, a lot more of that. Yeah, there'd be just people would have more money. Companies have more money. They're paying. They're not paying taxes in a free society, and uh, hopefully, we would have more of that. This says if your study program lasts longer than ninety days and you are not a citizen of EU member states or Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, or Switzerland, you must apply for a residence permit in the city in Germany where you're going to study. To get a residence permit, ah. you'll need confirmation of registration from your resident registration office, proof of health insurance coverage, student ID, proof of financial resources, valid passport with visa, health certificate, and it is a government permission slip. <laughs> but why would you? Why would you oh, want to go on. over? But why would you want to go overseas to get a degree? With and and be trying to buck the system anyway? That's ridiculous. I'm not saying to give in to the government, but I'm saying if you're going to buck the system anyway, why do you even want to go over there? Because it's not. Yeah, really, really can. And you can buy you can buy beer and Bitcoin. Well, have you seen German Scheiße videos? I would love to produce one of those. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to even translate. I'm I'm just not even going to translate. Well, you asked me. I have no idea what that means. Germany, other than free education. Scheiße is not a very I'm nice lost. word. Oh, okay. Did you Let's not scheiße? translate that. I said Scheiße. Scheiße is not a nice word. <laughs> we have some censorship going on here. It's what? not a nice word. It's not a nice word. No, However, censorship is fun. only when the government does it. It is fun when I'm in school and I want to say a curse word and I say Scheiße and my kids have no idea what I'm saying, so I'm safe. Oh, Scheiße. I do. I say Shiza, and they're just like Miss Parsons. They don't even give it a second You're glance. Like, I just sneeze. Go away. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. So, what else do we have lined up? Uh, you know what? Speaking of um, <laughs> it's funny. Speaking of funny things we were talking about as far as colleges go, uh, I did have an article that college is ripping you off. Students are cash cows, and schools the predators. It's true. true. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be, you know, you, you were already bringing up the free tuition, and then we were bringing up the whole, um, you know, people can't so people can't work their tuition off with a summer job anymore. I'm thinking, oh, well, that's kind of ironic, because I had an article from Salon.com, college is ripping you off, students are cash cows, and schools are predators. Higher education is also key to an affluent life, but it's really a big business designed to leave you buried in debt. Uh, I do believe all of us here have gone to some sort of higher education, and we can all kind of agree that, yeah, we're kind of feeling the effects of it. Am I am I right? Yeah. I mean, for for me personally, the only higher education I ever saw was a, uh, a license for massage therapy, which put me three grand in debt. I'll say this much. I got the elusive teaching position that I tried so hard for for quite a few years, and now I'm starting to have to pay back my student loans very shortly, so not looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm going to be um, going to have to be taking care of that, too, and uh, it's not going to be fun. I mean, I know I can do it, but it just, I mean, it just it really stinks. It, it, several times throughout my academic career, I constantly question, why am I doing this? Why did I allow myself to get so far into this, I just want you know, I want to get out, I want to just go on with my life and but it just it just really, really sucks you in and you have all these people saying, Oh, you should just go back to school and you know, get this degree and you and keep going. And just as a matter of fact is that it's just, it's it's you know, there's this huge why that the government society is telling you because 
you know, I, you know, I know, you know, my partner, for example, has an education that's worth about a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, he went to a private, he went to a private high school, went to a private college, and you know, still can't, still really cannot find a job in his field. The closest thing that he's gotten lands him about not even 30k a year when he should be easily making at least 70,000 a year. And it's just, you know, it's just this big line that, oh, you here, you have this degree, you're going to go and be able to find a job in your field and make all that money back to pay back your loans. It's not, go- it's not going to be an issue. Well, I mean, think, think like for him that his education's already paid for. But you know, think about it. We're encouraging young people to get into debt so early in their life. And the reality is, is that the majority of them will start at opening positions, which pay, you know, only a little bit more than minimum wage, depending on where you live, of course, but are not nearly any other function that you need in order to be able to get ahead on your debt and pay for things in your life that you need, such as like, I don't know, a car, an apartment, not being, you know, not having to live under mommy and daddy's roof. Well, I'm glad I don't live under mom and dad's roof, but I'll tell you the car is going to be, probably something I'm going to have to worry about soon. And um, it does, what you said is alluding to exactly what I've said. They place an emphasis on everyone needs an education. Everyone needs an education. If you want to do something with your life, everybody needs an education. Then Mm -hmm. they create all these universities that are sprouting up everywhere, even these no-name universities that people are like, oh, hey, yeah, I got a college degree. So I'm good to go now. Well, the problem is is that you have all these universities, whether they're major names or no names, and everybody now has a degree. Well, it's not enough anymore to have a degree to get that elusive job that you've been waiting for. So now you have to go back to school and get the next step degree, which would be, in my case, like the master's degree. Now, the difference in my degrees from what I got and what other people do is the fact that To be a teacher, I did a complete career change from what my bachelor's degree was. So I had to get a master's degree to be able to teach. But So these people are going, putting themselves further in debt by going and getting their next step degrees with the promise, oh, there's a job waiting for you when you graduate. But because nobody can get a job with their bachelor's degree, they're all going back to get their master's degrees. Then again, you still don't have a job. It is, the, it is their plan. This is the plan to, to put us into debt so that we cannot get a leg up. And once again, it separates us from the elite in our country to the so-called peons of the country. Well, the whole idea of college being a gateway to a more lucrative and happier American life was completely busted out with the National Inflation Association's movie and documentary, The College Conspiracy, which came out, I think, in like 2009. So if anyone wants to take a look at that, go to NAI's website, or NIA website, uh, and I'm sure you can find it on there, or it's available on YouTube. Just just Google, just YouTube, uh, College Conspiracy. You'll see it. It's a quick little, um, quick documentary. I think it's maybe an hour and ten minutes. So it's not nearly as long as some of the major ones out there. Um, but it would be – it's definitely a outlet and a resource to take a look at. Um, obviously, look at it with a critical mind because NIA is a for-profit company that does um, stocks and bonds and so forth. Um, but, yeah, check out College Conspiracy. That blows it all out of the water. It's, it's all a bunch of bullshit. I mean, let's let's look at textbooks, for example. Um, the textbook uh, was where they wanted, to, where say this person wanted to find it, according to this article, was that it was going to be inexpensively priced, and the authors were therefore asked to keep your reprint fees to a minimum. I mean, you, we've all experienced the fact that oh, textbooks, you know, we have to get brand new textbooks every single year, and professors are forced to change one freaking word in the entire book, and then all of a sudden it's a brand new edition. So the low level price that students were to pay for the textbook was about seventy five ninety five approximately. I was astounded, but it took just a few minutes of research to realize that seventy six was in fact um, lower by the standards of the industry. Paying two hundred and fifty dollars for a textbook is more like it nowadays. According to one economist, textbook prices have increased eight hundred and twelve percent over the past thirty five years. 
outstripping not only inflation by a mile, but every other commodity. Home prices, health care, they're usually spiraling out of control. Hey, my professors, especially when I was getting my bachelor's degree, because my um, master's program, if we did have textbooks, they were all digital. But um, in my bachelor's program, my professors made it no secret about how, and they would joke about it constantly, how companies would change one word in a book per semester, and then the next semester would release the next updated edition with that one word change and charge students all kinds of more money because they're buying a new edition after changing just one word. And that's why you should always buy used books. Not only is it cheaper, but guess what? It's already highlighted and underlined for everything that you need to know. But sometimes the used books aren't – they're too – uh, you know, in the past for us to use. Some teachers are really anal about it. The, thankfully, the last few professors that I had in my last few years were very much, oh, I highly recommend the textbook, but you don't need it. It's just it's only going to help you maybe understand the material more. I had one professor that said, yes, this is the eighth edition, but if you have the seventh edition, that's fine too. There, you know, the only thing that may have changed about the eighth was like a couple of different tables, but you can use the eighth edition. A lot of them were really cool about that, but. Some professors are like, no, you have to get the latest edition, and it just came out this year, so it's going to be three hundred dollars. Hurt the dur. Yeah, when you were talking about two hundred and fifty dollar books, like I really just about started crying because I was like, oh my god, I remember those days. I know that I I remember those days. I remember. Thankfully, I discovered Chegg um, in school, and I was able to rent a lot of my textbooks. But sometimes Chegg didn't have all the books that I needed, and I would have to go and buy a brand new book because I waited until the last minute, uh, and I couldn't get one needed. So I had to pay, you know, stock price for it, which is you know around two hundred dollars. I think the most expensive book I ever bought was probably three hundred, and I barely used it. I was very, very angry. Danica, what's the name of that uh, company again, or the website? Uh, this is from Salon.com. I'll link it to you in the um, I'll link it to you in the Skype chat. No, I mean for the uh, rental of books. Oh, I'm sure the listeners would love that. Oh, sure, absolutely. I didn't even realize that. Uh, it's chegg.com. It's C-H-E-G-G.com, kind of like egg with C-H in it. Uh, it is awesome. I know Amazon also does uh, rental books, and their prices are usually pretty comparable. Uh, so I would highly recommend that. I would highly recommend uh, doing the Amazon thing as well. A couple of other – your um, your college bookstore may also have textbook rentals. I think most campuses, it's relatively new, but Chegg and Amazon definitely have the best deals. And if you have Amazon Prime as a student, not only is it half the cost of normal Prime, but you can get two-day shipping on your products. And now, no, the question I'm, that I beg is, does Chegg accept Bitcoin? Unfortunately, they do not accept Bitcoin. They do accept PayPal, though. Same thing these days. So you could very well, you know – buy PayPal credit with Bitcoin and use that PayPal credit to buy Jig. So, yes, theoretically, you can buy books with Bitcoin. That's what I like to hear. I really like to hear this coming from you, Danica. I've been out of the college, the traditional college loop for so long that um, all this stuff is, is new to me. So, if you appreciate me ranting on about my college stuff, <laughs> I do because I'll tell you, being in being in debt because I went to college and just wanted to be educated, it drives me crazy. You know, that's I think I know that people complain about public education and how bad it is, but I think that's why I want to teach these kids because I know I can provide them a quality education, and so doing that, getting paid for it, and having these kids not having to pay for a public education. I can appreciate that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I I just want to help everybody, and this is what you're doing. You're allowing these people who want to go to school and they will put themselves into debt, you are helping them reduce that load. Uh, I certainly hope so. Uh, it It sounds like John's left the post. Is he still there? Is John still with us? I'm I'm still hey, here. I'm just oh, actively John is, listening. <laughs> John, John is. I mean, and what can you say? I mean, I'll everybody join. knows we're getting ripped off. I I think John, this is John's way of saying, "Hey, I will join in the conversation when I think it's more interesting." <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, I agree with everything that's being said. I mean, I think college is the biggest rip off. <laughs> What's that, Danica? Heck yeah! I mean. I'm making 
between six and thirteen hundred dollars a week right now. N- not doing massage. Not never went to trade school. You know, I'm a contractor. I'm ten ninety nine, so I'm not paying taxes. Screw you, government. You, you put me in jail. I don't give a shit. Um, the the way to prosperity is opening up your own business or developing something new. Something make yourself valuable. Do not be another cog in the wheel that just becomes another slave to the system, paying your taxes and just getting a job and just being over broke. Do something with your life. The way to prosperity in this country, in this in this climate, is to be an entrepreneur or to work for an, for a small company. These huge corporations, unless you're working for Google, who gives you a freaking nap time, it's not worth it. I'm think, sure Google does give you nap time. They do, but I think it's worth it just because of my line of work and the fact that I feel like I'm on a mission and I have a job to do. Well, I mean, I appreciate all that you do, Mandy, because it definitely sounds like that you genuinely do care about your students. I know that you're trying to do everything they can to not only open up their minds about the realistic things that our schools are not teaching them, such as the Abraham Lincoln story or not telling them that they should salute for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I did actually want to bring up something with you now that we're kind of on the subject, and my partner and I were bringing it up earlier today. But I was talking to him, my frustrations with Common Core, because we had a, um, we have a friend of ours that unfortunately has to enroll her children, her child in the public school system because she's a single parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know she doesn't want to do that, but unfortunately she doesn't have any other real choice in her predicament. But I was telling him my frustrations with Common Core math, how, and I don't know if this is a fake story or not, but supposedly what happened is that the father had this child who went her math quiz and came home in tears because she had nearly failed her math test um, because she just basically rewrote the way two times six was done. So, for example, there were two vertical rows of six each, which, you know, obviously we know that's 12. Then the same line over, there were six rows of two each. So she answered 12 on both of those. And she got them wrong because she was supposed to switch them around. Like one was basically the answer was still the same. But the way that she put the lines was incorrect, and he marked her wrong for that. Even though the answer was still 12, still the correct answer. But he failed her because she didn't put them in the right way, which made me very, very angry to hear. Because math is already tough enough as it is. I, you know, I know that as adults we can look at music and be like, oh, multiplication addition, that's fine. But think about it. You know, you're – you know, how old is this girl? Maybe first, second grade. I don't know what year they, you know, start introducing those kinds of tables to them. But she's in tears because she studied so hard, got them right, and yet is being told she's doing that wrong. And that just, that really made me angry. So can you please show a little bit more light about Common Core and why that why it's supposed to be like that, Mandy? I will ask this question first. Is this somebody you do or this is something you read? This is something I read. Okay. Um, let me tell you about a few of the fallacies. Okay. Make something very – I'm going to make something very clear. Common Core in general is just a bunch of standards. Okay? People are up in arms, oh, about Common Core. Oh, my God, Common Core. It's not the Common Core that is the problem. The standards are not the problem. Everybody, everything has standards. You cannot get away from standards. Even individuals have standards. They have personal standards. They have standards as far as who they're willing to date in another individual. Sure. How many times have you heard a person say, um, well, you know, my, my standards are higher than that? Okay, everybody has standards. Education is no different. They have common core standards. The problem with the common core is all the testing that comes along with it. I'm, I can't divulge the kind of tests that my, my children take, but let me tell you, there's no shortage of tests, and it, it makes me furious. It's a good waste of time that I could be teaching in the classroom. There's too many tests, too many. So the problem with Common Core is not the standards themselves, it's, it's the tests. And the people who are like, well, what about all this garbage that they're making my children read? Have you seen the books? Oh, uh, you know what? Take it and talk to your local school districts about that. As a collective, the the uh, local school districts are the ones who decide what your children study in that school district. The county that I work, where I work, they choose a different curriculum than the county where I used to sub. It is district to district. 
So don't blame the Common Core for this one. Blame your local school district. Now, if Common Core was the evil entity everyone's making it out to be, well, sure as heck, I would give credit where credit is due. But I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of the stuff out there on the Internet is also being created and passed around these days to demonize and make Common Core seem a lot worse than it really is. Do I fully support it? No, because I don't have full understanding of Common Core. I'm not understanding uh, all of it. I think aspects of it are probably okay, such as the standards part. But the problem I have with Common Core is I, I subbed in the second largest school district in the state of Georgia. I currently work in the largest school district in the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. The the needs of my students from the southern part of the county to the northern part of the county are drastically different. We are talking different um, different races. We're talking about different poverty versus rich. We are talking some serious demographic differences here. The Common Core was first established in New England. I think Connecticut was one of the states. New York might have been one of the states. And I think maybe Vermont or, or another state. But this system works so well that they said, oh, we're going to implement this across the nation. So please tell me, please tell me if the needs of my students in my county alone are drastically different from school to school, from north to south to east to west, why is this cookie cutter one fits all system going to work for every school district in the nation. It's simply not going to. So the quality of education is going to go down because not every kid is getting what they need and being met to fulfill their highest potential. That's another problem. Now, as far as what we're teaching in school, I used to take a look at those math problems and I used to say, what the hell is this? This is crazy. This is nuts. But remember, a lot of these problems being circulated, they're not giving you the explanation along with it to solve it. And I looked into one of them, and I was like, well, you know, reading how to solve this and why it is this way, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it might take a little longer, but here's the deal. Math was never one of my favorite subjects. For some reason, I'm really, really good at it. I always excel when I'm taking tests in math. But I can't stand it. It's like I look at numbers and my eyes glaze over. And part of the reason, like I tried to take trig in college and I couldn't do it because it was so damn boring. I didn't understand why. I kept saying, okay, yeah, this is this, but why? Why, why, why is this this? And I had to have clarification that they could not give me. And I know that there are other students out there. The whole point in the new system and basis behind the math models they're teaching is that students who need that why, they're getting that why because we are showing them visual models to be able to say, oh, so that's why. Okay, we know 2 plus 2 equals 4. Well, Mandy, wouldn't that make more sense? Well, Mandy, let me interject something here real quick. If, If that's such a great system, and let's suppose you're absolutely right, this is a fantastic system, why can't they sell it in the free market? It's easy to say it's a great system when you can shove it down um, everybody's throat through a okay, social guess school what, system. Okay, guess what? I'm not getting into this with you. I'm not getting in this, into this with you tonight. You and I have gone in circles about this topic because not, oh once, God. not once did I ever say that it's such a great system. I never said that. You put words in my mouth. No, no I'm, I'm not, not saying that you said that. that. I'm not saying that you said that. I'm saying that people that support that say that it's such a John, great system. I've had people that always, are considered right wing. No, listen to me. I answer Dan I'm answering Danica's question. You're trying to take it into a direction you and I have gone in circles around and we are not going to fill up the last thirty minutes of the it's show. Not a le- talking you about don't think it's a legitimate thing. question. I never said that. You don't either. think it's a legitimate you're, question. Again, again you're putting words in my mouth. We've already talked about it. No, no, I'm We've asking a question. It wasn't it. a talk, I'm asking a question. I'm not gonna answer that question, period. Okay, would anybody like to answer that question? I'll take anyone who would like to answer uh, the question. I, I mean, before, this has been my problem with Common Core from the beginning. Hold I don't on, think Common Core is the problem. Hold on. Hold on. Before anybody answers this question, and I will step back and let somebody ask or answer or do whatever, I would like to let everybody know that if anybody's interested in hearing this conversation, please feel free to find any one of the first 50 episodes of the PM show and listen intently because uh-huh. this, this argument is going to be on each one of them. Okay, go ahead, John. Well, 
Well, I mean, it's, it's, the, the argument keeps coming up. People are still upset about Common Core. I mean, I hear this all the time. I've heard it from people that are considered, consider themselves right wing. They think nothing is wrong with the school system. And my point's always been it's not Common Core. Common Core is not the problem. The problem is the school system is centralized and bureaucratized, and it's a socialized system. You're sending kids to school for free. You don't have a true free market in that. So you can't have different Here. ideas compete. You can't have something that comes up like Common Core and someone say, hey, this is a better system, and then we can actually test that and see that actually work in a voluntary society. Can we, can we what, please what you're talking about is not voluntarism. Can we sure, please. sure. I'm sorry. I did not mean to unleash you. No, I, I just you. wanted to answer the questions that you were asking because I never said this was awesome, and this is the argument he and I always come into, and I never disagree with him. I don't disagree I never said you said it was awesome. I, I've never said no, it. I, I never understand this. I understand this, system. but that's not the point. That's not the point. I don't we understand the point and... of talking about Common Core. Well, I was answering questions for Danica, so you weren't involved in that conversation. Burn. No, no. Because my problem with Common Core is that it seems to be more about control than it is about educating the children. I mean, the, the child came home crying because she got the, the answers right, but she didn't write out her work. That's outrageous. Right, and, and, oh, wait, and, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. And that was another thing I wanted to address before you continue further with this. That's, that's considered, that's, ultra, that's absolute bullshit. And I'll tell you why it's bullshit, and I don't believe it for a minute. I don't believe it because the standard in common core is not to belittle the children, and it is not to mark them wrong because they wrote something down. The new thought process behind common core is, even if the answer is wrong, if the students can explain how they came to their answer, they give them credit. So I'm not quite believing this story, and that's why I said about demonizing, because I was appalled when I heard two teachers talking saying, oh, she got the answer wrong, but she could explain how she got it, so I gave her half credit. Yeah, that's another reason I'm not believing this story that you read, Danica, because more than likely they're going to give students credit for wrong answers as long as they can explain how they got them. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of the teachers that um, they're aware of some of the BS that comes with Common Core. Uh, I just had an open house at my daughter's school, which she has to go to public school because of situations that are beyond my control at the moment. And I spoke to her, and I asked her, you know, what her actual thoughts on Common Core was. And she said it's it's generally just a set of standards, and each school district is allowed to uh, play with the curriculum as far as what they want to do it to do with it. So I mean, it's still based in this bureaucratic, centrally controlled system, and Common Core is just the introduction of different methods of coming to the same conclusion. But I think where the crux of the issue comes with Common Core is that it's not teaching children that there's more than one way to do it. It's teaching children that this is the way we're doing it now and you have to figure this out. And it's convoluted, it's back ass words, and it doesn't, it doesn't help these kids to develop critical thought. My only concern was that, you know, just, and I, you, you know, and I didn't want you to automatically assume that it was real. I mean, I don't believe half the stuff that comes up on the internet anyway. People are going to be making up stuff no matter what I saw. And I'm like, okay, that seems like BS to me because math is already hard enough as it is. But if it is real, because I don't know very much about Common Core at all, I just, it, it, it made me angry just initially thinking about it. And that's where me and my partner got into discussion. I said, okay, the student should not be punished for coming out that way because in later years of math, you have to show – how you came up with that answer before, like you can't just write an answer to a calculus or a trick question. They're going to want to know the formula. They're going to want to know your work, how you solve that question before they're going to give it to you. If you do not show that, that's going to cost you um, probably about half the points, whatever that question is. So, um, you know, if you get the answer right, like if you write the answer of, you know, in X3 or something like that, then and you don't show your work, they're going to mark you for not showing that. So my concern was that, okay, she, you know, may use unorthodox options to do that, but as long as she shows her work and can get the answer is still the same, 
what does it matter? And my partner was arguing, well, they want to try and push effective ways of solving things because it could make math more enjoyable and make it retain it. And I said, I realize that, but if people are different, people are going to have different methods of using math. I'm sure my method of math is way different than that of my best friends. So why should either one of us be punished for not having the same thought process? That was my concern. I think that in general, in general, people are looking too much to blame someone or something, and now it's common core. And as John was saying about Republicans, left wing, right wing, whatever, in the state of Georgia, it is the job of the Republican Party and the mission of the Republican Party to eliminate all common core in the state of Georgia. But the problem is if you eliminate common core, there's going to be something there right behind it to to take the place, and they're not going to be satisfied with that either. The the ultimate thing to do is to just eliminate the Department of Education. They didn't need it before 1979. They created it in 1979 under the, um, under the presidency of Jimmy Carter and being from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Who, um, you know, our parents got a better education than we did, even with all the technology we have in our classrooms. So the ultimate the ultimate thing to do is just to eliminate Department of Education and put every single aspect of education back on the local level. I couldn't agree more. My whole problem with centralized education is that it's from the point of a gun. If you don't send your kid to these schools and and you don't jump through all the hoops and you don't get your government permission slip, guess what? Men with guns will be sent to your house to force you to send your kid to to a, a government indoctrination camp. And that's all these schools are. I don't care what they're trying to teach, what amazing curriculum they have, how many amazing teachers they have. The fact of the matter is that when you send your child to a government school, because that's what public is, it's government. When you send your child to a government school, they are being indoctrinated to love the state. Say your, say your Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, don't talk back to your teachers. Don't question authority. That's what you're taught in these schools. And you're taught at these schools that from the barrel of a gun. And it's completely immoral, and I cannot support anything, anything. I don't care if it is effective. I will not support it because it's from the barrel of a gun and it's immoral. Here's my question. What about what, about what I'm doing in the public school system? You're subversive. <laughs> um, <She's> subversive. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is that I wish I could get offended by what you're saying because I work there, but I can't get offended by it. It's the truth. And I go in to provide that different viewpoint very subtly that the, the students need. I mean, you know, I know what I'm up against, and I know that there are not many like me. There are plenty, and there are plenty who do think like me who don't have the guts to do it. I talk to people all the time, and they're just like, yeah, 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 I know, I agree, I agree. And I'm like, you agree, but you don't do anything. There are ways to teach these children to think for themselves without being blatant, and you can use the same stuff that they're telling you to put into the classroom, the curriculum. So, to, to just sit back and take it is not an option for me, at least, and I won't do it. And like I said, I wish I could get offended by what you're saying, but I'm just one person, and it's a massive, massive system. So if I'm just that one person, I can't get offended because there are not more like me. Well, being offended is a choice. So, um, I think sometimes you and I have a very different viewpoint on uh, emotions, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what makes us different. But I will tell you guys this. I think we need to take one more commercial, and we'll be back right after these messages. Yay. Hi. I have a question for you. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you want a company that provides good quality ingredients and does not use artificial sweeteners? Look no further. Genesis Pure has a complete lineup of health and wellness, sports performance, and superfruit juices like noni and mangosteen that are pure, wild harvested with no binders and fillers. The philosophy is simple. Cleanse the body of toxins, balance the body's pH and hormones, and build the body nutritionally. Every race has a starting line, and yours is cleanse, balance, build. Sign up for at least a 25% discount and include auto ship of at least one product to start building up 20% back in points for free products. It's a win-win. Help fund our operation while you fund your body nutritionally. Start your journey at genesispure.com backslash freedomizer health. Again, that is genesispure.com backslash 
Freedomizer Health. Vaccines are required for students, employees, immigrants, military members, and international travel. Do you know how to legally avoid them? This is vaccine rights attorney and Freedomizer radio host Alan Phillips. My vaccine exemption ebook can help you avoid the mistakes that have cost others their exemption rights. Get the authoritative guide to vaccine legal exemptions, an ebook available at freedomizerradio.com and vaccinerights.com. Let freedom ring throughout the land. Get ready for the epic new documentary adventure ride of your life. Shade the motion picture. Help you into the globalist domain and embellish the Burma's film. Nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works the way you think it does. We have never let them know that no world government has been identified and they thought they just clawed the world economy to bring in a worldwide police state. But if they did it, it's going to bring them down. You have to stand up. Speak up. Speak out. She, the motion picture. Order your copy of the DVD today at she, the motion picture. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, warriors, you are the resistance. Warriors, you are not alone. There are pockets of resistance all around the planet. We are at the brink. Read about it in the Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance. Available now at newsstands everywhere. The Sovereign is a monthly 24-page tabloid newspaper featuring incendiary content about life during wartime in the age of Obama. Warriors, keep to date every month. Remember to read The Sovereign, newspaper of the resistance, available at newsstands everywhere. This alert is for all you boppers out there in the big city, all you street people with an ear for the action. This is Mercy. If you're listening to this message, Warriors, you are the resistance. This is Mercy. Mine will be the last voice you will ever hear. Don't be alarmed. Good evening. Ancient of Days returns to freedomizerradio.com. Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern for 90 minutes of adventures in history, ancient and modern, plus current events here on freedomizerradio.com. See you there, Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. Hi, this is Cindy Lake. Please listen to me on Freedom Talk with Cindy Lake at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on freedomizerradio.com. All the issues that are important to you, like Common Core, Agenda 21, Free Informed Jury Association, 10th Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Third Amendment, the Constitution. See you at freedomizerradio.com, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you there. We're getting that fucking blue screen at death lately. And we are back from our commercial break. Sorry about the commercials. They are all over the place. But I do want to say a sorry to John Moreland. John has let, he left the conversation, and I don't know if he's even listening to the show. I sent him a text message. I don't want to say that John's opinion is not valid. I don't want to say that what he has to say is not valuable information. It is certainly valuable information. It's just... He and I have been around this subject so many times, and it always comes down to this one one argument. I just wanted to, clear, to clarify Danica's concerns. I just wanted to clarify any questions and answer any questions that she had. Um, certainly, certainly, there should be many options out there. John is not incorrect, but I do want to offer a public apology to John. It's 
to make sure that he knows that I, I value his opinion and I value what he has to say. And I certainly did not mean to step on anybody's toes. So, John, if you are listening, I apologize if I hurt you. I apologize deeply if I hurt you. Um, it, there's just, like I said, there's just a certain number of topics that we talk about all the time, and he always says the exact same thing. So, John, not my intention to offend you, and I apologize. So, let's go ahead and move on. And did you find the article you were talking about? I think it might be coming up. Yes. Okay, the so article what? that I'd love to talk to you guys about is Cody Wilson, the creator and idea man behind the Liberator, the 3D printed gun that is now sitting in, I don't believe it's the Smithsonian, um, but it's in some type of museum. He's come out with a new mod tonight, uh, today, this morning. He debuted it on Mr. Ernest Hancock's show, De- Declare Your Independence, which also airs on the LRN Dead FM uh, radio network. It is the Ghost Gunner by Defense Distributed. It is a fully 3D printed AR-15 lower receiver. Now, for those of you that are not gun fanatics or interested in guns whatsoever, the lower receiver of an AR-15 is the gun. That is what controls all the working mechanisms and the fact that you can now... 3D print a lower receiver made from metal, it's not plastic, is a bombshell when it comes to they, them, those that want to control you and I. Uh, any, any, anyone, anyone, anyone with a 3D printer that is capable of printing out metal products can go print a lower AR-15 receiver with no serial number on it, which means it cannot be registered with the government, which means, guess what? Anybody can, have, anybody can have a gun. Absolutely. But here's what I don't understand. If everybody has a gun, those guns will kill people. Guns and don't kill people. If they kill people... Guns don't kill people. You look, put a gun on the ground, it's going to sit there. I think for our safety, we nobody should be allowed to have a gun except authority. Okay, I'm not even going to talk to you. <laughs> Man, I do sarcasm well. <laughs> Indubitably. I could tell the sarcasm for a mile away. It was, but wait a minute. If we took... But hear me out... If we if we criminalized alcohol and continued the war on drugs, everybody would be better off and it would the world would be a safer place. No, because you create a black market where violence, coercion, manipulation and dirty dealings become commonplace. When you de illegalize, when you when you remove government controls of any product, then you remove the necessity for a black market where violence and coercion is the norm. But crime has gone down in Chicago since they took away everybody's guns. Um, no, I'm sorry, sweetheart, it hasn't. Oh, but it has. You know, it's gone. It's gone from what 500 murders in a weekend to a thousand. I mean, that's a that's a lot of improvement. Yeah, that's backwards, sweetie. Yeah, I know it is. That's not even the right numbers. I know. I made the – no, those numbers are legit. You can ask anybody. Ask anybody. Those are legit numbers, and I will inflate those numbers to fit my purpose for anything I need. Thank you very much. You know, so it's interesting morning. to know that um, Switzerland has the highest number of gun owners, but the lowest number of murders and violence and crime overall. Hmm. That's just what Switzerland wants you to think. That's all fake. If it wasn't reported in American media, then it's not for real. Oh, okay. So it's Ghost Gunner. It's an open source CNC mill uh, program that was developed to enable the common man to more easily and privately manufacture critical gun components. Um, more information can be seen at uh, – there's a Wired.com article that's up at, at Wired.com today, also at GhostGunner.net. Um, like I said, it is a – CNC'd 
lower receiver. And anybody that knows about guns knows that that's a huge, huge. I I can't even say this enough. It's huge. Okay, when 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 the U.S. federal government created the internet, that was huge. Can I ask when you a question? When Satoshi Nakamoto released his white paper on Bitcoin, that was huge. Can I ask you a question? Is it huge? It's not as huge as I am, but yes, it is huge. <laughs> when Cody Wilson this morning released the plans for the Ghost Gunner, the CNC milled lower receiver, this is huge. Is it big? Not only can you have this little BS the Liberator, which looks retarded, but yeah, it's a firing working mechanism. It's a gun that is plastic and goes through metal detectors. It works. Is it that huge? is nothing in comparison to the fact that you can now print a lower receiver. People have the ability now to 3D print anything and everything. There's already been houses printed. There's already been different doodads and whatchamacallits printed in the, in the, in the security of your own home. You know, uh, Ernie Hancock was saying something to the effect of, uh, you know, his, his favorite part about 3D printing is the fact that his uh, his vehicle he has he has three I, I want to say it was uh, Malibu not Malibu um, Montero Sports or something like that you know and the the doors the door handles constantly break because it's just a piece of little shit plastic part and with the advent of 3D printing all those tiny little things that you need if you need a bracket for something 3D print it if you need a uh, a dowel rod, 3D printed. If you need um, a hanger, 3D printed. You don't have to go buy something from these centrally controlled big box corporations who are in bed with government now. It's, it puts the power of manufacturing in the hands of the common man. Anyone, a 13-year-old boy can go out, print whatever he wants. He doesn't need central controls anymore. All we need are individuals who are learned, responsible, and intelligent, which, sadly, I think uh, technology may be advancing a little bit faster than humanity in that respect. Oh, that's for sure. (laughs) But that doesn't negate the fact that this is an amazingly huge advancement in 3D printing. That is a big deal. Then is it is it huge? It's giga, gigantic, enormous. <laughs> it's over nine thousand. Over nine thousand. Just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> I actually used that um, that line at a coworker, and one of them didn't understand what I was talking about, and the other one chuckled very loudly. So it was it was very humorous, and made me happy. <laughs> No, okay, so all right, so we're, we're allowed to listen to music on our iPods or whatever music player that we want because some, we work in a very big area and sometimes it's just it's helpful to be able to just listen to music to tone out other people's voices and to concentrate on your work. So that's one thing that is really, really awesome about this job that I have. So I was putting on my music and I was in the Pandora, and of course I had the Koji Kondo radio station because he composed Legend of Zelda and, you know, Pandora it mixes a bunch of other really cool stuff there too. But for some reason, my Pandora was like, oh, let's give you lots of Halo music. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoy Halo. It's not my most favorite game in the world. I think there are other games that are slightly better than it. But, you know, Halo is enjoyable, and certainly the music is very, very good. But it keeps feeding me, like, three different themes of Halo and a couple of different other game themes. And I'm like, really? What is up with this? Like, why is my Pandora feeding me Halo? And I complain to another semi-nerdy co-worker, and he's like, what is it? He's like, WTF? That's what the freak, for all you that people don't know, what the freak is Halo. And I'm like, really, dude? Really? My 56-year-old mother knows what Halo is, but you don't? And keep in mind, this, this gentleman is not 56 years old, so I was very appalled. Wow. That's that's pretty amazing. Do, do you do you know what Halo is? Do either one of you know what Halo is? Halo, yes, that's a, is this a first-person shooter game. Yeah, it's an Xbox game. Yeah. All I'm saying is the greatest combination in Halo is plasma pistol and regular pistol. Okay, I mean, so you guys know what it is. I'm like, how do you not know what Halo is? Like, really? 
I mean, I might I'm not so know upset that they got rid of BXRing in Halo Three because that was the best freaking combo in Halo Two that they ever created. I might not know much about it, but at least I knew it was a first-person shooter. At least he knew it was a video game. Like he had no idea what Halo. He probably thought it was that little circular thing that goes around a uh, freaking uh, angel's head. And I'm like, really, dude? Like, face palm, face palm. Yeah, seriously. Oh my goodness. So, well, it's so, been yeah. quite a while since I've played Halo. Um, I've generally gotten away from video games, television. Pretty much anything and everything that is not liberty oriented. I'm extremely obsessive in my ways, and uh, yeah, yeah, I just okay. see video games as a waste of time. I find more enjoyment and relaxation editing audio for uh, for the podcast, or reading about uh, the law by Bastier, or you know, delving into uh, audio production by doing. Uh, uh, audiobooks. Um, so TV, video games, eh, it's passe. That's for the kids. We're, we're here to change the, change the world. I don't have time to play video games. I have to change the world. Well, hopefully I never get to that stage because I've, I mean, I played video games ever since I was a little girl, and they're, and they're my way of relaxing. I totally understand that, you know, there are things that people draw away from. I know there's, you know, there's tons of things that I've drawn away from because it's just you know, it's just not my thing anymore. I hope video games never come through like that, but you never know. I mean, I also have, I mean, I certainly don't play as much as I used to because, you know, I've been trying to work out. I've been trying to work a lot. I've been trying to do, go out and do other things rather than just being at home. But, you know, when it, you know, I certainly do love sitting down and playing some games. So hopefully that will never change, but you never know. I think you forgot to add something else to that list, that the, the people we used to play with, they have gone and started their own lives and, we just don't have time for that. I know. I know we got time for that. You and I are destined for better things. Like, seriously. Screw those guys. It's true. So well, you guys true. like any games that include paddles. So, you know. Um, yeah, especially ping pong. Show <laughs> <laughs> sure plays a mean pinball. I mean, ping pong. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Because we are throwing back to the great sounds of the 70s. <laughs> tonight. I don't love the thing. Gotta love them. Absolutely. Uh, Tommy. Uh, Tommy, the uh, pinball wizard. Yeah, the pinball wizard is very good. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I got, I'm kind of annoyed with, like, team playing games because I've had my share of social games. I know you have too, Mandy. But when it, just when it comes down to it, like, I can stand playing as maybe, like, with one other person. But really good games, like, they just really piss me off because people just aren't really reliable. Like, I've known be- you know, known people in games that just, like, run off and don't listen and they get themselves killed or they go on. And she's like, dude, no. It's just like, no, I want someone that's reliable. And, you know, I don't want to be freaking dragging you on a leash. So, goodbye. I'm going to go play Bioshock. I'm going to go play Mass Effect. I'm going to go play The Walking Dead. I'm going to go play Destiny. Like, I don't, I don't eat people. Screw people. Rah. Well, on that, Jenkins. on that wonderful PSA that Danica just left <laughs> We do have just a few seconds left in the show. I do want to tell you to stay tuned, please, and stay and listen for the Proof Negative show coming up next from 9 to 12 Eastern. And uh, he always has an interesting array of guests and things to talk about. So stick around and listen to him. We're going to end with our friend Harrison Ray, and I hope you guys will listen. And please check us out tomorrow on the Voluntary Virtues Network on YouTube if you missed us tonight. We're glad you listened. Hang out with us and be with us next week. Thanks. Have a good night. Love you.